today I have a 6.0 with cracked cylinder heads. It has fuel in the cooling system. So what I'm going to try to do is see if I can catch this one. Normally, if they're really bad, you see a whole lot more fuel inside of there. And those I have a video on where you can catch them by watching for air bubbles in the fuel line. This one's going to be pretty hard being a smaller leak like this. This is a construction company's truck that they don't want to stick a lot of money in. So I'm going to try to see if we can catch it here by pulling out each injector and uh, checking it that way. I'll show you how I do that. So I'm going to go ahead and drain the coolant and then get it apart and get the injectors out. So I'm going to go ahead and get this one torn down. This is the stoppers they supply you with that you put down inside the injector cups. This, that way, once you do that and you fill it up with the WD-40, you can check it a whole lot or catch smaller leaks and look for air bubbles once you also drain the block. Okay, I have all the injectors off. And not only did I drain the coolant, but I took the plug out of the side of the block here on the driver's side. Because there's two ways to test this. If you drain all the coolant out of the block, this one by far doing it this way will give you a whole lot better results because you can see the air bubbles. It takes their kit because they give you a little stoppers that you put inside where the injectors go. And once you put the stoppers in, you fill up the area with say a WD-40 or something. Something that won't harm or damage a block. If you use water, it might end up rusting it or get water into the engine. And there's no way we can you know, say to do that. But anyhow, we put the stoppers in where the injectors go. Took the plug out the side of the out of the side of the block to drain it, which I'll show here, here in a minute. I've got the cooling system pressurized, and then here you can look down inside and look for air bubbles on the driver's side. I've had it pressurized for quite a while here, about a half hour. No signs of any air bubbles on the driver's side. Okay, now I'm checking the passenger side. A couple pointers I'll give you is pay attention to three and five. Also pay attention down low by the glow plug area, right above the cup, and also right by the exhaust valve. So the top of the cup and by the towards the glow plug, more or less like say 6 o'clock. We'll go ahead and look inside this one. Now on this side I'm doing it the old-fashioned way that Ford has it is, has us doing it with removing the injectors and taking out all the water and pressurizing the cooling system. So it's the same thing but without the air bubbles. This is number five. Pretty much from that you can see that number five is the one that's cracked and has the problem. Okay, here's another one that gives us a pretty good clue of what to look or where to look and what to look for. We take the injector hold down tool. That's how we're going to inject bulletproof solution into there. This is the tool that they've made to inject it into the cracks. So it's indexed, just like an injector would be. We put it on, and we can see here, put the solution through here, which I'll show doing it on the car in a minute. All of it's focused on this area right here. Again, that's pretty much around the six o'clock area on the in, uh, in the injector bore. So that's another pointer that we have to tell us that this is the common area that if they were to crack, is where it would be, just as we found it. So let's go ahead and get this set up and then do the solution. And remember, you want it, after it sets up and um, hardens, you want to recheck it to make sure that you have a good repair. Before we inject the solution into the cylinder head, there's a little bit of prep work we want to do. One, wipe the head dry, clean it off. Bulletproof says not to use any carb cleaner or brake cleaner, just wipe it dry with a shop towel, paper towel, something of good quality, wipe the injector board clean. Next, hook your grease gun up and prime it. We don't want to be injecting air, so pump it here until we get, just hook it up here to the Zerk, 
and then pump it until we get the grease coming out the end so we have it primed. Next, we're going to go ahead and put a little assembly lube around here, put it in between where it slides, and also we're going to put it here around the O-ring so it doesn't get stuck in the head. Then we do a little bit more to prep the block for a second. We just want to stick some uh, paper towel down the board, keep any of excess fluid going into the cylinder, and then we're going to inject this. So I'm going to go ahead and put the paper in the bore, show that, and then come back and put in the tool into the sleeve. Okay, I have the bore clean all around the, up above the sleeve. I have the paper down inside below the sleeve, in, below the injector cup. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the tool now and then inject the fluid. Tool's all lubricated. Got the hole down there. I'm gonna torque this, put this in and then torque it down to 24 foot-pounds. going to need two hands for this but next I'm going to screw the tool on or the, the pump here and the gauge on and then start injecting it so I'm not going to film this while I use two hands to start this and get it on okay I have the tool on now I hook the grease gun up to the zerk fitting and pump it up to 500 psi Okay, I have it pumped up there to 500 PSI. They say it will slowly drop down. We expect that as the solution is being forced into the crack. It could take up to 15 minutes is what they say, but what they want us to do now is let it slowly drop down to zero. And once it does drop down to zero, we'll remove the tool and wipe it dry and all the excess solution off of there. Let it sit for at least 24 hours. It's Friday night. I'm going to let this sit over the weekend and check it Monday morning. You don't want to reassemble it. You don't want to turn the key on and do anything to contaminate it. Let it sit and then let's recheck it before we put it all back together. Make sure that we have it in the right spot and everything worked out good. So I'm going to go ahead and let this sit for a few minutes and take it off. Again, it's Friday night, so I'll check this again Monday morning, see what kind of results we have. You do want to clean the tool up, use some carb cleaner and get it all cleaned up inside and out, so nothing hardens in there and ruin your tool. So clean it up before you put it away, or use it on the next cylinder, depending on how many cracks you found. I have it all back together, and it's time to flush it. But I want to do a warn you on a few things. Remember, all the plastic and the rubber is, depending on how long it was left contaminated, could be bad, swollen, damaged, so you want to check it out. This one, I did put a new degas bottle on it. I just have the soap in there. I'm using a simple green. It seems to work pretty good. But I'm going to flush it out, drain the block. It's going to take two or three flushes. Each time I'm warming it up, because just like any oil or fuel, it's going to flow better and break down more when it's warmed up. So I have the engine warmed up to help out here. I've already driven it around the block. Also another warning on that, you don't want to drive it too long with straight water because it will overheat with straight water. So I have it all ready here to be flushed. And another thing here I want to point out, this is the O-ring that goes under, underneath the intake manifold to the front cover. They deteriorate pretty bad. So if this thing is really bad, if your hoses are swollen and soft and damaged, make sure that this is that you replace this O-ring here and uh, handle it, otherwise you may end up with some other leaks. And if you run these low on coolant, you're going to end up with the cracked head or EGR cooler problems and have more issues with it and an unhappy customer. So let's go ahead and flush this one. I'm gonna do a couple flushes on it, get it all cleaned out. I have another video showing the flush. 
but just to make it easier, I'll go ahead and pull some stuff on here. You want to make sure that you push everything through the heater core, get it all out of the block. So right now, while it was still warmed up, I've got it going through the heater, uh, heat, through the heater core. This truck did not have a heater, um, the heater control valve, so I was able to just hook it up. If it does have the heater control valve, then make sure that you do not have the air conditioning on and that the heater's on so it circulates everywhere. So we'll go ahead and run it through here until it's clean, come out the top and the bottom, and clean out the degas bottle. Then I'll fill it up again with soap and run it again, and this time I'll drain it out of the block too. couple of other helpful hints. I'll do it with the truck running, with the truck off. Do it in different places, that way the water circulates to different areas of the vehicle. And also I'll shut it off a few times, the water and the truck, let it drain. That way everything will come out and build back up. It helps to get all the contaminants out. Another precaution I like to give here is water boils at 212 degrees. So make sure that as you open this cap up and it loses the pressure, because pressure also keeps it down so it won't boil at 212 degrees. But once we expose it to air, it might just instantly come to a boil. You can see that's what this one is starting to do. So be careful as you open this, let it cool down and do whatever it takes to make sure that you don't hurt yourself or anybody else. Here's what the cooling system looks like after a few flushes. As you can see, it came clean. I just used soap in it both times did it with removing the plug on the side on the driver's side of the block and also going making sure i pushed everything out of the heater core both ways doing it with the engine off and also with it running and letting it draining a few times it helped to get it all out so hopefully this helps you out and shows you a different method on how if you if you've got one with a cracked cylinder head or fuel in the cooling system a different procedure to do it to save both you some time and the customer some money if these help you out, please like and subscribe. Thank you.